Suddenly, I realized I was all alone backstage. And I got the same feeling you get just before a storm breaks. I turned and started toward Christina's dressing room. Then I heard the shot and the scream. And as I started running, I had a strong hunch I'd just lost a client. The New Adventures of Michael Shane, Private Detective. Michael Shane, reckless, red-headed Irishman, is back again in his old haunts in New Orleans. This is your director, Bill Russo, inviting you to listen to another transcribed episode, which we call The Case of the Left-Handed Fan. Boy, son. Where's Christina Bancroft's dressing room? Now, son, that's something a lot of people would like to know. Now look, Pop, you don't see a bouquet in my hand, do you? She sent for me on business. Oh. Oh, that make you Mike Shane, maybe. Quaint way of putting it, but it's a general idea. Hey, second door down the hall on your left, Miss Shane. Thanks. Hey, it's just we gotta be careful. A lot of people always try and see Miss Bancroft. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I forgot to tell you, Miss Bancroft hasn't come in yet. She... Well, fine. Well, just go on in, rest yourself. She ought to be here any minute. Oh, okay. Mm, quite a place. Mm, nice. Mm, so that's Christina Bancroft. Some picture. Oh, there you are, Mr. Shane. I'm so sorry to have kept you waiting. Please forgive me. You know how these interviews are. They stretch on and on and on until you think you will simply uh, go out uh, of I... your mind. But I'm so glad you're here now. We've almost half an hour until curtain. This thing has me so petrified. I haven't slept for a solid look, week. Just look uh, at these circles under my eyes. Oh, they're ghastly, aren't they? Now, maybe we get all this straightened out. It's been such uh, a strain. Yeah, such yeah, a strain. Yeah, and the worst part of it is the unknown element. If it were only something out in the open, it would be different. But it's the not knowing that's been tearing me to pieces. I... What's the matter? Huh? Mr. Shane, why are you looking at me like that? Why, uh, well, you're not exactly ugly, you know, Miss Bancroft. Oh, did you expect I would be? Uh, no, no, it's just that I... Well, I'll skip it. All right, Mr. Shane, will you take the case? You must. I simply can't... Now, wait a minute. Don't I... start that again. Hmm? Look, can't we go through this thing slowly and calmly? You're, you're not on stage now. You're just talking to poor little me, Mike Shane, and you're leaving me way behind. How about a little less razzle-dazzle? Okay. Huh? Just Okay. Yeah, that, that's what I thought you said. I, uh, I get wound up sometimes. You certainly do, Miss Bancroft. Mike, I'm scared. I really am. Yeah, I'm just finding it a little tough to adjust to the new rate of speed. Well, I've adjusted now, so you're scared. What of? I don't know. You don't know? Now, look. I, I want to hire you for three days for protection night. Why three days? The play ends its New Orleans run in three days. After that, I'm... Going away for a while, alone. And I'm not going to tell anyone where. I'll be all right then. So I want you to protect me for the next three days. Just a minute. How am I supposed to protect you if I don't know what I'm protecting you from? Now, what is it? Someone. I don't know who. And I certainly don't know why. But whoever it is, he's trying very hard to kill me. <laughs> In a moment, we'll return to the new adventures of Mike Shane and the case of the left-handed fan. Well, one thing about my job, you meet such interesting people, like Christina Bancroft, the actress. I guess dazzling's as good as any other word for Christina. The girl was very, very beautiful and very, very hard to figure. One moment, she was quite the actress, talking a mile a minute with sparks flying and with gestures yet. The next moment, she was a sweet, scared girl, quietly asking me to protect her from an unknown killer. Well, at the time, the job of protecting Christina was the pleasantest prospect I'd had for weeks, so I didn't hesitate. After our interview, I stuck around in the wings watching the play. This Christina seemed to be knocking him dead. Finally, near the end of the show, a tall, thin guy with a streak of gray came over no, where I was standing. Me. Hello. You can't oh. mean it. I'm Hamilton Dunn, the director. Way, I'm mine, Shane. How are you? No place Shane. Hello. Uh, enjoying the play? Yeah, it's quite a girl out there. Yes. Shane. Heard the name somewhere. You're a friend of Christina's? Mm, not exactly. 
Huh? You, you say you directed the play, Mr. Tom? Yes, that's right. Maybe you can tell me then. Tell you what? What there is about her. Christina? Yeah. There's people out there in the audience. Look at them. Spellbound. I suppose you've known her quite a while. Yes, yes, quite a while. She's a great actress. You know, I somehow get the idea that in addition to being a director, you're sort of a fan of hers. Yes, Mr. Chang. I guess you might say I am a fan of hers. Next question? Sorry. Anyway, I'm sure this stocky chap coming toward us can tell you a lot more about Christina. Oh? Yes, you see, I'm only her director. He's her business manager. He sees her a lot more often. Naturally. Naturally. Hello, Frank. Ma'am. Well, this is Frank Harper, Mr. Shane. Frank, Mr. Shane. Hello. Shane? Michael Shane? Yeah. I've been trying to find out, very unsuccessfully, just what Mr. Shane is doing here. He's a private detective. So be said. Private detective? Yeah. Look, I wasn't trying to be coy. I didn't want to say anything about it until I was sure Christina had told you. Oh, she certainly didn't tell me anything. She, she said something to you, Harper? No, she said nothing, Shane. Oh, uh-huh. that's interesting. Oh, uh, curtain. Absolutely the worst performance I've ever given in my life. Atrocious, simply atrocious. I'll never, never... Pam, how was I, really? Why, you, uh... Well, you played a little differently tonight. More introspection and uh, something else. You seemed preoccupied. I didn't like it quite as well. Oh. Frank, what did you think? I thought it was good. Look, I suppose the three of you have met. I'm sorry, Mike. This is Ham Dunn, the greatest director there is, isn't Yeah, it? yeah, we've all met. Uh, Christina, is something the matter? Matter? What do you mean? Mr. Shane is a private detective. Miss Bancroft, some people to see you. Yes. Uh, look, Cam, it's nothing really. I, I don't want you, uh, Frank, to worry about it. I just want Mike to sort of do a little work for me. Uh, I'll tell you all about it later. I, I've got to Miss go now. Miss Bancroft. Yes, I'm coming. Uh, Christina, I, um, I thought maybe we could all, uh, well, all of us could have supper at our nose this evening. Oh, I'm sorry, Ham. I wanted to talk to Mike about some things, but some other time real soon. Uh, all right, Christina. Uh, Frank, you don't mind, do you? No. I've got some business to take care of anyway. Business? I'll see you tomorrow. Christina went over to the stage door and left the three of us standing in the wings. The looks that Dunn and Harper were tossing in my direction, it didn't take my customarily brilliant powers of deduction to tell me that I was about as welcome as a bumblebee in a phone booth. So I went back to Christina's dressing room and waited for her there. Pretty soon she came charging in and the sparks were flying again. Mike, you can see what this thing is doing to me. That atrocious performance of mine tonight. It was just that I was completely terrified. I thought... All right, all right. Let's get out of overdrive, huh? But don't you see... Who is it? Flowers, Miss Bancroft. Oh, all right, Bob. Bring them in, please. Just set them down there. Is there a Yes, sir. Here it is. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Looks like some florist made enough on that sand or a tire. Quite up to your standard tonight, my dear, but superb as usual, Everett. Of course, he'd notice. Oh, Everett? What does he expect? Perfection every night? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Everett Leverett. Everett Leverett? What is that? A word game or somebody's name? Everett's my number one admirer. Follows the show everywhere, goes to each performance, sends flowers every night. Each performance? Doesn't he have anything else to do? Apparently not. Well, uh, I mean. Oh, skip it. Look, let, let's get back to this unknown guy who wants to kill you. Oh, Mike, you don't know what it's like to walk back and forth on that stage and think that maybe someone beyond those footlights whose face is only a blur is waiting, just waiting for a chance Yeah, to... yeah, now look, do me a favor, will you, Miss Bancroft? What? Just sit back and relax for a minute. Let me talk. Yes. Now, you called me down here to ask me to protect you from someone you say is trying to kill you. You don't know who or why. Now, what I want to know is what gave you the idea. Have you any evidence that someone's oh, out to... Oh, yes, I have, Mike, several things. All right, let's have them. Well, there was a telephone call a couple of days ago. A man, he told me then what he was going to do. Anyone around when you got the call? Well, I don't remember. Then there was a note yesterday threatening me. Where is it? I, I threw it away. Why? Then, because I didn't take it seriously. Then this morning I came down. He was walking backstage. A sandbag dropped. Just missed me. Anyone else around then? Well, I don't think so. That's then enough. I live in lots of time. That's but... enough. You're lying to me. Yes. Yes, I'm lying to you. This isn't an unknown crank who's after you. No, it isn't. You know who's trying to kill you and why. Now, let's have it. All right, Mike. 
They think I'm in love with Frank Harper, my business manager. They? Who's they? Hamdan and Everett. Your director and the man who sends you flowers. Well, are you in love with Harper? No. But they won't believe me. And they both told me that... that if they can't have me, nobody else will. I think they mean it, Mike. I think either one of them is perfectly capable and willing to... kill me or anyone else who stands in their way. In a moment, we'll return to the new adventures of Mike Shane and the case of the left-handed fan. Well, it all started when an actress named Christina Bancroft asked me to protect her for the three days she was going to be playing in New Orleans. Seems that her director, Hamilton Dunn, and a wealthy admirer of hers with the quaint name of Everett Leverett had both told her that if they couldn't have her, nobody else would either. Yeah, all in all, it looked like just the kind of setup where somebody was apt to wind up dead. And my job was to see that it wasn't Christina. The next day was Sunday, and bright and early in the morning, I was knocking on the door of Everett Leverett's hotel suite. He was a thin, elegant-looking gent, just about as well-groomed as a guy can be and still not be running in the derby. You say you're a friend of Christina's, Mr. Shane. That in itself is sufficient credential here, but uh, what precisely is the intent of your visit? I came to talk a little about Christina and about you. Two highly compatible subjects of conversation. Yeah. You know, I don't get you at all. Why... The usual question, why do I follow Christina around from city to city? Oh, that's it. Because I have found in Christina the one thing that all men seek, Mr. Shane. What's that? What indeed? The perfect foil for oneself. Uh, yeah. I don't get what's in it for you, though, all this traipsing around. Let us say that my life is not without its occasional satisfactions, Mr. Shane. Oh? All men love Christina. My distinction is that of them all, I alone understand her. Really understand her. She knows this. What do you mean, understand her? Well, for contrast, let's consider someone who obviously does not understand her. That third director of hers, Hamilton Dunn. You don't think he rates an Oscar, huh? The man has a genius for misinterpretation. He consistently fails to apprehend Christina's character in all his direction. She's complex. He makes her simple. She's dangerous. He makes her harmless. She's basic. He makes her superficial. Sounds like you made quite a study of it, Mr. Everett. Leverett. Uh, Leverett. Did it ever occur to you that uh, Christina might someday get married or something like that? No. I've made Christina my career, Mr. Shane. It's inconceivable to me that any career I should undertake might ever end in failure. Well, about then I decided a whiff of fresh air was in order, so I left... I was beginning to see what Christina meant when she said Everett Leverett would stop at nothing. But thinking of Christina reminded me she was still locked up in her hotel room, so I went over. It was noon by then. The two of us went to Galatoire's for lunch. As we ate, I kept thinking of all the things Leverett had said about her. After we'd finished, I began to see some of what he meant. You know, you're a very interesting sort of person, Mike. I'll never forget how you kept telling me to talk slower and get out of... Uh... Overdrive, you called it. You can be sort of hard to keep up with, Miss Bancroft. You sort of cut me down the way Frank... The way Frank does. He uh, sort of cuts you down, huh? You like that? It's amusing. You know, speaking of interesting people, you're not exactly the dull type. As far as I've been able to find out, almost everyone who ever comes within 50 feet of you seems to be in love with you. Yes. It has to be that way. It does? Mm-hmm. Well, look, this may come as a surprise, but I guess I'm one of the few guys who doesn't happen to be in love with you, Miss Bancroft. No, you're not now. But if you were around me long, sooner or later you would be my. You would be. And all of a sudden, there was something in her eyes that was clear and unblinking and sure, like a black panther closing in. I took her back to a hotel. It was Sunday, and there was no performance. Well, that night, I figured it might be a good chance to get around to Frank Harper. But I was a little late. Just as I got to his hotel, I saw him come out the door, look up and down the street, then get into his car and drive away. 
He looked like a man with something special on his mind, so I followed him. He drove across town to St. Charles Avenue and along it a few blocks to an apartment house. I stopped a little way down the street. Hopper got out of his car and went inside. At first, I didn't notice the long black convertible that had eased to a stop across the street. In a few minutes, Hopper came out again. There was a blonde with him. A very smooth-looking article, I might add. They got in his car and drove off. I got out of mine and started across the street toward the black convertible, but it was already pulling away in the opposite direction. Hey! Hey, wait a minute! Hey! Too late. That convertible had jumped away from the curb like a startled kangaroo. I couldn't see who was in it. The next day, Christina stayed in her room all day. And that night, I took her to the theater for the last performance of the play. It was also my last night on the job, and I wasn't sorry. After the show, I was standing near the stage door when a long black convertible eased into the alley. Yeah, the same convertible I'd seen the night before. And who got out was my old friend Everett Leverett. Where's Christina? Over there, talking to Dunn. Oh, yes, Dunn. Everett? Good evening, my dear. Are you ready? Everett, I'm terribly sorry. I won't be able to make it this evening, I'm afraid. I see. Frank and I have some business affairs to discuss. I see. But... uh... Maybe I could call you later, hmm? That will be fine. Good evening, Mr. Shane. Christina and Frank Harper started for her dressing room. I wandered around the wings for a few minutes, doing nothing in particular. Then it hit me that things were awfully quiet all of a sudden. I looked around. Hamilton Dunn was nowhere in sight. Neither was anyone else. I was all alone backstage. I suddenly got the feeling you get just before a storm breaks. I turned and started toward Christina's dressing room. Then I heard the shot and the scream. As I started running, I had a strong hunch I just lost a client. I pounded down the hall into her dressing room, then I stopped. Christina was crouched over in one corner, whimpering. But Frank Harper lay face down on the floor, dead with a bullet hole in his back. Christina. Christina, what happened? Come on, stop it. Stop it. Tell me what happened. Frank and I were talking. I saw the door to the next room open a little. Yeah. Handled the gun. And Frank saw it, too. He jumped in front of me. The gun fired. Whoever it was dropped the gun and closed the door. Yeah, I see the gun. I'll leave it right there for the police. And there's a door leading outside from this room, huh? Yes. Oh, my. All right, stop it. Can't you understand? Frank got the bullet that was intended for me. In a moment, we'll be back with the thrilling climax to tonight's Michael Shane adventure. Well, right from the start, the setup had spelled murder. I had to admit I wasn't expecting Frank Harper would collect the bullet that was earmarked for Christina. I called police headquarters, and Inspector Lefebvre's boys were swarming all over the place ten minutes later. By the time they'd left, Christina had recovered a little, but she still looked pretty dazed. Well, look, you don't feel like talking, but I've got a couple of questions. Go ahead, Mike. I got a hunch you held something back from the cops a few minutes ago, right? Right. Let's have it. All right, I said I couldn't see the killer's face. That's true. But I did see his hand, holding the gun in the doorway. On the little finger of that hand, I could see a ring. A ring? What kind? I couldn't tell. He's dead, Mike. Frank's dead. Yeah, that's the point. It was almost you. So there was a ring on the little finger. Which hand? It was the left hand. Left hand. Right, thanks, Christina. It's a big help. Yeah, about then, it looked very much like this was going to be about the shortest investigation on record. When the police told me a little later what they'd found out so far about the gun, I was more convinced than ever. I went over to see Hamilton Dunn, the director. When I told the cop outside his door that Inspector Lefevre had okayed me, which was almost true, I got in. What if it was my gun? It was stolen a few days ago, and I reported the theft. Could have faked that. Shane, I didn't do it. Now, why would I try to kill Christina? I'm in love with her. That's uh, quite a ring you have there. Ring? Yeah, on your little finger. Well, it was just a signet ring, nothing special. Why? Oh, skip it. You got a light? Light? Oh, certainly. Light it here somewhere. Oh, here it is. 
Thank you. Very much. The signet ring was on the little finger of the same hand he'd used to work the lighter. His right hand. So Dunn was in the clear. And in my book, that left just one guy to see. Everett Leverett. I must say I'm glad to see you, Mr. Shane. It's been very dull sitting here in my suite. I can't go anywhere. That plain clothes chap out in the hall has some sort of ridiculous order. You know, that's uh, an interesting ring you're wearing. Oh, yes, isn't it? A rather foolish but grateful woman gave me that almost a year ago. Yeah. Now, look, I want you to write down everything you did this evening. Oh, not again. I've already... Here's a pencil. Do you know you're being awfully old school about this? Right. Oh, very well. That's enough. I've just started. It's okay. You've already told me everything I wanted to know. Well, there it was. The ring he was wearing was on the little finger of the same hand he'd started to write with. His left hand. So Everett was the boy. I went downstairs into a phone booth and called Inspector Lefebvre. Shane, Inspector. Look, I got your boy pegged for you. He... What? Huh? Oh, wait, wait. What's that about the gun? You... You sure? I see. What? Oh, no, no. Skip it. Doesn't matter now. I went outside. A light rain had started falling. I suddenly felt old tired, a little sick. I went back to the theater. Christina was still sitting in her dressing room. When she turned toward me, her eyes were hollow and lifeless. She seemed to be looking past me. Hello, Christina. Hello, Mike. It's all over. Wound up. It is? Yeah. You found out who killed Frank? You killed him, Christina. Yes, I killed him, Mike. You... You said you saw a ring on the killer's left hand. But the police told me just a couple of minutes ago there were no fingerprints on the gun. So the killer couldn't have been holding it in his bare hand. You lied to me. Yes, I was lying. You couldn't have seen that ring. I'm glad you found out. You... You found out about Frank's blonde girlfriend. That was you in the black convertible. You, you borrowed it from Everett. You were checking up on Frank. I knew... Yeah, you, you knew all about the girlfriend. You couldn't stand a thought of that, of anyone not loving you. Particularly the man the man you loved, Christina. That's why you killed him. I killed him. I loved him. I killed him. It's different than I thought it would be. The black cave. I'm all alone. Christina. I did it because I didn't think I could... Stand as loving someone else. But I could have. I could have because I loved him. I wish he was still alive. Now you think of it. Now. Why couldn't you? There, there's a policeman waiting for you outside the door, Christina. There he is. Well, I mustn't keep him waiting, must I? I, I guess not. Thank you, Mike. Thank me. Goodbye, Mike. So long, Christina. She opened the door and went out. I could hear the cop leading her away. I sat there for a long while, staring at the slanting rain which drummed against the window. I thought about Christina... Or what she'd said to me once. If I'd been around her very long, I'd have fallen in love with her, she said. I was glad I hadn't been around her any more than I had. Because she just might have had a point. Yes, she was very beautiful. Very strange. <laughs> This is your director, Bill Russo, again. Our story is based on characters created by Brett Halliday. The music is composed and conducted by John Duffy, 
and Michael Shane is portrayed by Jeff Chandler. The New Adventures of Michael Shane is a Don W. Sharp production, transcribed in Hollywood and distributed exclusively by the Broadcasters Guild. Next week, you'll hear Michael Shane in another thrilling adventure from mysterious and colorful New Orleans. (laughs) 